Hey guys, my name is Lonnie. I'm a real alcoholic. And yeah, 2010 was the last time I've got out of prison. Um, I went there because of that vehicular homicide that I had um, in somewhere around 99. <clears throat> but when I got out, man, I had, I had a year left on parole. And I was feeling good, you know, I was I was kind of doing a little bit of AA stuff in the prison and I was kind of doing a little bit of church stuff and, and I was feeling really good, man. I got out and uh, moved to a place that I had bought sight unseen. I bought it from prison um, and it, I had some neighbors where I'm in a little fishing community and I had some neighbors that were friends of the family and there were some really good people, man. They... Uh, some real prominent people. You so some of them were politicians. A couple guys worked for the sheriff's departments and and were lieutenants and captains. And you know it was it was a really good group of guys. And they would come to the camp and they would drink and cook and do their thing. You know. And so, man, I was thinking. You know, after a few months, I had convinced myself. I was like, you know, man, if I drink with these guys, I ought to be all right. They liked me. We got along. Um, and so I did. I started drinking with them. And man, let me tell you something. They did not drink like I drank. Once again, six months later, uh, they weren't wanting to have anything to do with me. My drinking, my attitude, my behaviors just, just totally flipped. And we reached a point where we weren't enemies, but, you know, they, they just didn't want me around anymore. And so, man, that that shot me. That shot me off on another uh, nine year relapse. And the only reason I made parole was because I only had a year on parole. And in that year's time, I. I can admit, man, I, I I did a I had an accident that I ran from. Actually, two accidents that I ran from. I didn't get caught. They weren't real serious, you know, fender bender type stuff. Um, I I wrecked a truck. I actually jumped the levee with it and hit a tree on the other side of the levee. Uh, I don't know how many mailboxes I checked, but it was just it was just unbelievable. Um. There was some kind of grace there, man. There was some kind of um, God's hand was on me that, that I didn't get another charge and go back to prison. And of course, throughout that 10 years, um, I don't think I drew a sober breath, man. Once I started it again in 2010, um, there was a little while. There was a time somewhere around 2014 I had went to rehab for a little while. I went to detox is what I did. I was about to lose a job. I knew I was drinking too much. It was a very good job. And so I said, man, I, I got to play the detox route. You know, I got to save my job and let them know that I'm getting some help. So I went to detox. I got hooked up with this IOP group. And about a month or two into that, um... The job laid off about 150 people, and I was one of them. And so I was like, F it, man. No job, no sobriety. That was the only reason I had got sober anyway. And a lot of my relapses, even before then, were exactly that. I never came to Alcoholics Anonymous just for the sheer fact of staying sober. It was always to accomplish some external circumstance, to accomplish getting the getting the woman or the wife, to accomplish getting the job, to accomplish getting the the, the car, to to my living arrangements. It, you know, there was always some outside circumstance that was my motivation for sobriety, and it never was just simply for sobriety. And so, so the next ten years of drinking, man, I uh, you would think with this whole vehicle or homicide thing, I, I wouldn't have drank and drove, but being the alcoholic I am, I convinced myself, well, you know, you're just going to stay on the back roads and you're just going to go to the little country bars out in the rural area and you're going to be real safe. You're going to drive real slow. Um, and, and that's what I did. And I was lucky. I really was. Um, I don't know how 
in that time I didn't hurt anybody and and end up back in prison. I really don't. I I did go to jail a couple times. Um, I had some girlfriends that, of course, once again, we, I'm fighting with every woman I know, and so the cops get called, and then I get I get locked up in jail, and um, the charges would be dropped, and so. So I lived like that, man, for years. I was making real good money. I'd gone to welding school while I was in prison. I had my own little welding business, and um, money was just flying as fast as I could, you know, get it to come in. I was spending a couple grand a, a month just on alcohol. Just my bar tabs were running three to five hundred dollars a night, and. <sighs> It was a way. It was a way of life that I thought I kind of had it under control. After two thousand and fourteen, I had found my mix, man. My mix was was E and J brandy mixed with iced tea. And for a while, man, I could get off of work. I could get fucked up real fast on that. I could eat and I could be in bed by eight o'clock. And I could wake up the next morning and start all over again. And so I thought I'd found the answer. I really did. Um, in 2017, I was riding on the levee and I was mixing my drink. And after that first drink, I felt something happen in my body. I felt this this shiver, I, this this thing that happened. And I told myself, I said, you know, I says, that's that craving that they talk about in Alcoholics Anonymous. I knew that after that one 32-ounce drink, that that was it. I was off to the races. I knew I wasn't stopping. I had only bought two half pints. That's all I wanted that evening. But once I experienced that feeling, I, I felt that craving kick in. I knew that I wanted more, and I was going to get more until I passed out. Now, that wasn't enough to get me sober, man. Actually, 2017, I have a writing that's funny. It talks about how, you know, Lonnie, you're not an alcoholic. AA is full of bullshit. Um, it's all about self-discipline. It's all about self-will. It's all about uh, disciplining your character. Um, this, that, and the other. I had tried. I was in several different types of religions man i was not trying to be christian i was i was i was into all kind of esoteric stuff i was into some pagan stuff um i had practiced satanism while i was in prison so i was still kind of continuing that a little bit um i was looking for power i really was i i knew my drinking was a little out of control and I wanted to control it. And I was thinking that there had to be some type of internal mental change that would happen by doing these spiritual practices and all this spiritual education. I, I studied comparative mythology for a while. Um, and none of that worked, man. None of it, none of it gave me the power I needed. None of it gave me the peace to where I could control how much I drank. And, and it damn sure didn't give me enough peace to where I didn't feel like drinking. So, so I continued that way for a long time. And the end of my drinking, um, I was alone. There was, there was nobody there. Hadn't been there for, uh, probably about two years. The last girlfriend I had, poor thing, she, she had a brain injury and she couldn't smell uh, I think that's the only reason she was with me. I, I didn't have hot water in the house. One one stove, one burner on my stove was working. A little small air conditioning unit in my room. I mean, just just living like 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 a fucking caveman. <clears throat> and and towards the end, it got to where I I couldn't work anymore. I was running out of money, so I was like, uh, man, I gotta get a job. They're they're about to repo my truck. I had six months left to pay on a truck. I bought a I bought a brand new truck, man. I had six months left to pay on it. And um they they were threatening repo. And they were like they were like, man, just give us five hundred dollars and we'll, we'll give you an extension. I didn't have five hundred dollars. 
I called a friend of mine. He said, motherfucker, get a job. And I was heartbroken, man. I was like, dude, you don't understand. I can't work. I, I'm, 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 so, I'm so drunk. I'm so physically sick from being drunk that I, I just could not function. I, I, I couldn't go to work. Well, I had forced myself to get out and about and put in some applications. And, and this one company said they were going to hire me. And so I called, I called the loan people up. I said, you know, I, I got this job. I don't know when I'm starting. Can y'all give me an extension? Well, long story short, they ended up repoing the truck anyway. Well, about a week after they repoed the truck, the company calls me to go to work. I'm like, oh, man, what am I going to do now? I'm living in a rural area. It's like 16 miles to the nearest town. How am I going to get to work? I need some drinking money. That's for damn sure. So I got to get to work. Well, here's what I did. I had a four-wheeler, I had a boat, and I had a bicycle. So what I did was I lined it up to where I could ride my four-wheeler to my boat. I would jump in my boat and skip across the lake. And then I would jump on my bicycle and ride about another mile and a half, two miles through the town to get to my little job site. And man, I call that the Cajun Triathlon. And I did that every day for a while till I bought me a little car. Um, but but that was that was the length I was going to to get my drinking money. I, I had already sold almost everything that was sellable around the house. And so so that of course that of course ended bad. Um it got to the point where I was showing up at 6 30 in the morning, drunk off my ass. Um, I got into an argument and almost got in a fight with a salesperson and naturally they called the law and put a restraining order on me and so I wasn't allowed back at that place anymore. So for the next few months, man, I just, uh, I want to say it was over six months. I don't know how long it was. My routine was, was drink. That's all it was. Um, from the time I came to till the time I passed out. It was drink, 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 drink. There was a few brief times when I said, Lonnie, man, at least wait till noon. You know, try to get some stuff done in the yard or do something before you start drinking. And I couldn't do it. I, I could not do it. Within an hour, hour and a half of waking up, guaranteed I, I was already on my second drink. And it didn't matter. I, sometimes I wake up at three in the morning and drink. Sometimes I wake up at 10, and, 10 at night and drink. It, it was just drink, pass out, wake up, drink, pass out. I went from my recliner to the to to the bedroom, and that was about it. I don't even remember eating. I, I really don't. I don't know what I ate, to be honest with you. I think the year before, a friend of mine had loaded my freezer with some uh, with some wild game that he got rid of from his freezer that was old. So I think that's what I survived on. But... Um, Towards the end, man, I was thinking, you know, Lonnie, this is bad. You, you got to find you got to find work, man. You know, how are you going to keep drinking if you don't find work? And then I thought, well, how about sobering up, man? You, you know, at least for a little while. So I was thinking to go back offshore. I could stay out there and, and sober up. And then but I knew I knew the minute I came back on land, it would be an all out party fucking fest. And I knew that wasn't the answer. But one day I'm sitting there, I'm drinking and I'm thinking. That's what I did was, was I would drink and think. And all of a sudden I used the bathroom on myself wide awake. And it wasn't number one, it was number two. I crapped myself wide awake. I wasn't even trying to pass gas. And I was like, oh man. And the thought came to me, I flashed back to the military and our drill sergeants told us that when your body starts giving out, when you lose control of your body, bladder and, and you start defecating yourself that's when it's time to quit that's when you can stop and rest other than that it's mental and so i, I learned that marathon runners will actually go through that also where, where they will lose control of bodily functions that your body just starts giving out and i had reached that point and i was like son of a bitch man i'm dying and Medically, I did not know. I'd I'd been to the hospital a couple of times because of severe pancreatitis, but that that sure wasn't enough to keep me from drinking. Actually, the doctor said, 
that drinking brandy was okay, that if I was going to drink. So he said, how much you drinking? I said, well, about two half pints a day. I thought that was a good non-alcoholic number, you know. I didn't want to tell him I was doing over a fifth a day. <clears throat> but he said, yeah, brandy's good, man. Why don't you cut back to about a half pint a day? I said, okay, but of course that never happened. But I, I was dying, guys, and I had to do something. I did. I, I just, I had a mom um, that was dying of breast cancer. And the thought of her watching me die a slow alcoholic death um, really was a, was a catalyst to me getting sober. And it's, it's sad because for an alcoholic, you would think that the jail time, the vehicular homicide, all, all the stuff that I had put myself and others through before 2019, you would think that would have been enough to, for a good enough reason for this alcoholic to get and stay sober. And it was not. I could not get and stay sober. So as selfish as I am, when death was knocking at the door, when death got personal to me, then my dumb ass wanted to get sober. And so I did. I grabbed my fifth and I ran to the emergency room. I knew they were going to have a bed in a detox for me. And that's what I was going to do. I had to get locked up to get separated from alcohol. <clears throat> and so with that, guys, I'll keep this one kind of short. Um... That was 2019, and what I'd like to do is in the next session with what it's like today, what made the change when, when I got to that detox, and what made the change over the last three years, eight months, where I have this peace and this contentment that I have with Alcoholics Anonymous and with God. So I hope to see you there. I'm sorry these talks are taking so long. There's so much that's happened in my life. It's hard for me to condense it to an hour i'm gonna practice but glad you're here guys and we'll talk to you next time okay be blessed